huh? Yeah, it is a pretty day. You know, it's about 72, 73 degrees right now. It's just beautiful. Hi, everybody. I'm Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Education Center in far west Texas with a video that's a special request for a fellow by the name of Steve. Steve wanted this video, and I thought, well, I could shoot a little video and send it to Steve. Or I could post it, put a little information in here, and maybe um, maybe you guys could learn something, or at least learn something that'll put you on a track to learn it correctly. So here we are, out at what I call the point. Now just for reference, the compound sits behind you here, and we're at the edge of my campground area, looking into the Arroyo. Now down in the Arroyo is what this video is about. Steve had come out here, oh, about six weeks ago, a month ago, and brought, very kindly, brought a huge piece of equipment. It looked like a bobcat on steroids with tracks and a big seven-foot blade, and he did a lot of the leveling and a lot of the work I wanted done around here so that we could build the campground, fill in that hole, and and then and, and. He also dammed up the arroyo. Now, we have only 20 acres of land here, I didn't see any need to buy any more as a privacy buffer or anything like that. We only have 20 acres, and of that 20, 12 of it is this arroyo that's behind me. We own the whole doggone arroyo, and there isn't anything we could do with it. And I always said, you know, I'd like to dam it up. I'd like to dam it up. Well, we finally did, and I'm going to get behind the camera right now and show you half of what happened. Last night, we had... We had a pretty good rainstorm, a real good thunderstorm that came through. Now the flying ducks knocked over my um, rain gauge, so I don't know how much, but if I have to estimate from the check dam that we already have, it was pretty close to an inch, somewhere between three quarters of an inch and an inch of rain that we had. That's a good rainstorm for us. and. That gave us enough to put some water in the uh, the dam we've done at the Arroyo. So let me show you. This is uh, probably 40 to 45 percent of the water. The other is over a hill where we can't get to right now without getting muddy feet. So down in front of us is the water we're holding back right now. Kind of zoom in on the dam itself. You can see the road goes there. It's only about three and a half or four feet high. I think it's probably capable of only about uh, 32 inches uh, because it's not quite even. We really should get back there and tweak it and bring it up another couple of feet and tweak some parts of it. Now way over here, that vegetation there, um, that's the second half of the, um, of the leg of the arroyo that, um, that's holding water. And you see my stack of tires. I've got to move those tires. But it comes way out to here, and then it joins this main arroyo. So what we have right here is what we can see, and it is, as I said, it's about 45%. So the bulk of the water is the other side there. Now I estimated, and I won't get into the math on it, but I estimated we have in the neighborhood of 35, maybe 40,000 gallons held right there right now. Not bad, so Steve, it is holding. Now the thing I wanted to discuss a little bit briefly here, now the thing I wanted to discuss briefly here is about dams out here in the desert. You know, when I first moved here, and that's been nine years, a very wise woman who was a, um, a college chemistry professor, she told me if you look around here over the years, which I've done now, it's been nine years, she said if you look around you'll see the remnants of dams that people have built that have failed. And she got into the chemistry of it, how, you know, water weighs something like seven and a half pounds a gallon. But when it starts picking up all this mud and dirt and dust, uh, mud and dirt and debris rolling with it, you know, it can be almost double that. And it's rolling with such speed. That's why in berm and basin construction, you construct the berms with the basins to stop the water. It overflows and it builds up a little bit of steam instead of building up a lot of steam to blow out a dam. That's what happened to a lot of these dams was they were blown out by the sheer speed and force of the water or they were overtopped. 
that's an issue. And that's an issue we had. Um, I always like to make fun of that publicity hound creep that lives two and a half miles to our south southeast. He had had, and I thought he was joking when he first said it, but he was deadly serious. He wanted to build a dam to create a lake so that he could have the lake and he could rent jet skis year round on the lake and then have annual jet ski races. We all thought he was joking until one day he and some guy that was a self-taught engineer went ahead and built one. Now, the, the dam was very, very poorly designed, very, very poorly built and executed, but it did rain like this, and it held water for the first rain, quite a bit of water. Then we got a three and a half inch gully washer, blew it out, it's gone. Haven't heard a word since about jet ski races, but I remembered what that college professor said. The area is littered with ruins of dams, and I got to thinking, well, what could we do if we want to hold water, not create a lake, hold water here on our property that wouldn't? So we started doing the math. And one of the purposes when you're off-grid or in the desert particularly or anywhere, if you've read Brad Lancaster's book, Rainwater Harvesting for Dry Lands and Beyond, you've learned. And if you haven't read Brad Lancaster's books, buy them and read them. I've been in contact with Brad. I'd love to have him come out here and lecture us. Um, he learned he knows and he's made it work in Tucson. Tucson is amazing. What he has gotten done in the city of Tucson uh, is truly amazing and Tucson is roughly the same climate as here. Kind of following his model out here. So we didn't want to create a dam that created a lake that would impound water, you know, line it with uh, something so that it would hold water. What we want to do is like Brad teaches, we wanted to stop the water from running away. All it does here is it runs down, you can't see, but it runs down about two and a half, three miles down this little valley and it connects up with Terlingua Creek which eventually connects up with the Rio Grande which eventually connects up with the Gulf of Mexico and there goes our water. If we can slow the water down or stop it right here, then we have a chance of developing um, I hate to say microclimate, but in any, um, an ecosystem that is dependent on the seasonal water that we get. So the idea in creating this dam, and it's not really a dam as much as it's a dike. I believe if we get enough rain, it'll blow out. I'm not, you know, it's not that well designed yet, or per perhaps ever, that it won't blow out. But the idea is not to create a dam that won't blow out. The idea was to create something to a check dam that stops and holds the water. Multiplying out what the possibility of holding water is here, I have the capacity of over 9 million gallons of water. Again, doing the rough math, we've never had 9 million gallons of water come rushing through here. So I don't think it'll get over top. But I don't think it's going to hold water for any length of time. What it's going to do is stop it, let it infiltrate into the ground, and slowly it'll build up the sediment underneath that will hold more and more and more water. And if the dam doesn't blow out, eventually we'll get a small pond. I hate to call it a lake, but a small pond that will hold water. Then we'll have water birds and plants growing, um, hopefully a microclimate. So that was the whole idea here. I often say, don't fight the desert, the desert's always going to win. So if you build a dam, like my publicity hound friend did, the desert's going to win. It won. We came up with a system to just stop today's water, let it infiltrate into our ground. It'll catch tomorrow's water and the next day's water, and eventually it'll hold water. That's the idea. That's the start. Let's hope it keeps going. There'll be updates. Oh occasionally maybe in two days because we've got uh, three days of rain here we had a 20 percent chance yesterday and it rained like stink we've got a 30 percent today a 50 percent tomorrow and a 40 percent on uh, uh, Wednesday so let's see what happens in the meantime that's it about the um, the impoundment uh, the dike let's call it a dike I don't want to call it a dam 
and let's see what happens. Let's hope it doesn't blow out. We need not 9 million gallons to do that, and I doubt that's going to happen. Let's see what happens. But Steve, here was your video. There's your water. We'll see how long it stays. I'll do an update in the comment section below or in my description section. I will update as to how long this water stayed, but you see where it is now. I'll do an update. Until then, it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Education Center with Cascade the Wonder Dog, who is wondering why it's muddy down there. See you guys later.